certainly it's, it's most appropriate for an event such as the 75th um, General Assembly to have a side event focus on the Square Kilometre Array project because very much like the United Nations, the Square Kilometre Array is and always has been about international cooperation. Uh, it, it, is, it is really a, a symbol of what the world can achieve by standing together, what the world can achieve, not only in science, but also in terms of impact of, of, on society through multilateralism, sharing resources, working together and partnership. So today we will be providing you with, with an insight into the different aspects of the Square Kilometre Array project, what it ex its exciting and very pioneering science missions are, but also how the disruptive technologies developed through the project will have a real impact on society, including the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals and indeed of agendas such as that of the International Telecommunications Union for Digital Cooperation. But perhaps more important than that, what we hope the session will leave you with is a sense of how important international cooperation is, how the Square Kilometre Array project has organized itself in a very pioneering way uh, to, to work together efficiently, for example, by creating a new intergovernmental organization, but also how do we, are we harnessing the potential of science, the science which knows no borders, which doesn't know the divisions of nationality, uh, cultural or, or language, how the world can come together. And I think perhaps most importantly, during this time of uh, where we are still stricken by a, a pandemic and also with real pressures on economic and social development worldwide, how the Square Kilometre Array serves to inspire. And certainly in my country and South Africa, it continues to be a beacon of inspiration. So we have a whole range of experts of um, closely associated with the project who will be speaking as, to us during uh, the day. But to set the scene, who better than the Director General of the Square Kilometre Organization, Professor Paul Diamond. Uh, Pro Professor Diamond really symbolizes what the Square Kilometre Array project is all about. He has had a distinguished career in astronomy uh, in the North America, in Australasia, in Europe, in the United Kingdom, and now since 2012 has been at the head of the Global SKA project, which I should say just very recently achieved the most important milestone when with a plan for constructing and operating the Square Kilometre Array Telescope was approved by the Board of Directors of the current organization. And that those were plans uh, which were developed under the leadership of uh, Professor Diamond. So Phil, without any further ado, over to you for the first presentation. Thank you very much, Don, for that um, very generous uh, introduction. I do welcome all who are uh, attending this, this side event, um, uh, part of the, uh, the, the myriad of events celebrating the 75th anniversary of the UN General Assembly. Um, and it's, it's very pleasing, to, as Dan has just indicated, to see a lot of names here that we don't recognize and to see the, the numbers are growing, which is, is excellent. So my job here is to, uh, is to just set the scene. I'll do, do so fairly briefly. Um, and then hand over to uh, a, a range of, of people from around the world uh, who have uh, volunteered to, to provide talks on what is a different uh, focus for us. We, we don't normally give um, uh, talks or, or a session uh, on the range of topics that you see in front of us. We normally focus on, on the science and technology. But first, let me set the, uh, the, the scene. So this is what the world of uh, mega science facilities uh, is, is looking like and will look like in the 21st century. Um, a range of um, enormous optical telescopes uh, exemplified by the European Extremely Large Telescope in the, the bottom there. Uh, CTA, the Cherenkov Telescope Array, which will observe gamma rays. Space missions, uh, massive telescopes like Athena, the X-ray, uh, mission plan for uh, the next decade. The replacement for the Hubble, the, joint, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, due to be launched uh, in, uh, well, later next year. Uh, gravitational wave observatories, neutrino observatories, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, which is operational in northern Chile, and the Square Kilometre Array. I really do wish I was 30 years younger. Uh, and uh, a young scientist uh, able to take advantage of all of these, but it is going to be a fantastic 
um, future for, for our science and for young people who wish to be engaged in the science. Now the SKA Square Kilometre is, is a cornerstone that uh, it op will operate in the radio range of the electromagnetic spectrum. And I don't have time in just a few minutes to describe all of the science that it will do, but it is summarized in this, uh, the, this slide that you see before you, uh, really encompassing almost the entire history of the universe, all the way back to just a few hundred thousand years after the Big Bang. And uh, exploring everything from the, uh, the dawn of the cosmos to the dawn of life. Uh, being able to undertake fundamental physics research in, in terms of testing general relativity. Uh, and it, uh, also okay. providing <laughs> another window uh, into the universe by gravitational waves. So a huge range of science uh, that will be enabled by the SKA telescopes. So what are we? We're a global collaboration. Um, we have largely finished the design now of the telescopes, as Dan has just indicated. Our, our recent board meeting uh, approved the, uh, uh, the construction uh, proposal and the uh, observatory establishment and delivery plan, uh, which will be passed on to the future council. I'll come to that in a, in a moment. Well, I'll come to it now. So a, a treaty has been signed to establish the SKA Observatory, which is a new intergovernmental organization. It's only the second one uh, in the world for astronomy after ESO, the European Southern Observatory. And it's a major decision by governments to uh, decide to sign a treaty to establish a new scientific infrastructure. So that is a, a fantastic uh, result. We have 15 countries engaged in the partnership at this time, and that number is growing. And what we're going to build is two huge radio telescopes. One, an array of nearly 200 dishes in South Africa. Another, an array of uh, low frequency antennas in Australia. I'll show some images in a moment with the global headquarters in the United Kingdom. Plus uh, two massive supercomputers associated with the two telescopes. And then a global network of what we call regional centers, which will be described to you in another talk a little later. So our governments are working to provide almost 2 billion euros for the next 10 years, which will cover the construction of the first phase of the SKA and the first 10 years of operations. So where are the telescopes? So I mentioned one is in South Africa and you can see here uh, that it's situated about 600 kilometers north, northeast of Cape Town. Uh, in the Karoo. Uh, but we're not building on a brand new site. Our South African colleagues have already built Meerkat, uh, 64 antennas, which you see in the image there. That is a, a real photograph. It's not uh, CGI or Photoshop. And it is an operational facility uh, established in a, in a fantastic radio quiet zone protected by um, legislation uh, generated by the, uh, the South African government. And that is key for the SKA sites. We have to be in radio quiet regions to protect ourselves, our telescopes from radio interference. Similarly in Australia, the, uh, the site is out in the remote Western Australian uh, uh, desert areas in the Murchison, a very low population density, about 600 kilometers north of Perth. And our Australian colleagues have built and are operating two radio telescopes, the Australian SK Pathfinder and the Murchison Widefield Array. And again, this whole area is protected by radio quiet legislation. They're two of the quietest regions on the earth. The headquarters uh, sits in the shadow of the world famous uh, Lovell Telescope, the 76 meter radio telescope uh, which is almost 60 years old now, that you see in the image there. And our headquarters building, built uh, specifically for us, is the, the, the large building you see in the foreground there. And we have our own version of the United Nations General Assembly Chamber, uh, somewhat smaller, but uh, we're very proud of this. Uh, and it's a critical part of our ambition to, to be a nexus for world radio astronomy. What will the two telescopes look like? 
um, well, these are animations at the moment. Um, you can see on the left there what we call SKA low, the low frequency component of the SKA, consisting of uh, what will be 131,000 uh, log periodic dipole antennas spread across about 65 kilometers uh, of the desert in Western Australia. And then on the right, you see what we call SKA1 mid, which will consist of 197 15 meter class dishes uh, of, a, of a different design than uh, a traditional, but um, a highly efficient design. Uh, and 64 of those dishes already exist um, from the, the Meerkat array. They will be integrated into SK1 MID. And the SK uh, MID telescope will be spread across 150 kilometers of the, uh, of the Karoo. This is our initial ambition. Our long term aspiration is to build the full SKA phase two, which will have two and a half thousand dishes across southern Africa and up to a million antennas across Australia. So that is a grand ambition for the future. But we're, we're having to start with, uh, I would say, small steps, but we will be building the largest facilities for, for astronomy in the world. We already have prototype systems for SKA on the ground. This is an SKA dish prototype funded by our German colleagues, the Max Planck Gesellschaft. Uh, and it is uh, somewhat larger than the Meerkat dishes, learning from the, uh, uh, the construction of that project. And it is uh, uh, available for us for, for testing purposes. And similarly, we have a, a prototype of an SKA low station with 256 of the selected low frequency uh, dipoles in place. Both are providing, both prototypes are providing invaluable data uh, for us. The metal is one part of it, uh, but you will learn later from my colleague Antonio Crisostomo about the, uh, uh, the SK regional centers and handling this enormous volume of data is one of the biggest challenges that the SK provides. Uh, you may notice uh, on the left there that the raw data from SKA low will amount to two petabits per second. That is several times uh, the data rate that travels over the global internet at the current time. This will be uh, processed through uh, digital signal processors, transmitted to supercomputers, and then transmitted over 100 gigabit per second undersea fiber cables uh, to uh, at these SKA regional centers, which will be distributed around the world. But you'll hear more from this in, in another talk. So we are fundamentally, as Dan indicated at the beginning, a global research infrastructure. And that's one of the great pleasures of the project as illustrated by the range of speakers that you see today. It also is one of the challenges because we're dealing with different cultures, uh, different governments, different agendas, different uh, time scales for, in, for all of their processes. Uh, but the whole works superbly well. And we now have 15 countries uh, participating uh, in the SKA uh, with uh, new partners, uh, as you see on the right there, um, uh, Portugal, France, Spain, Germany, and most recently Switzerland uh, joined the SKA organization over the last two years. And more colleagues in Japan and South Korea uh, are also observers on the board. And so they're, they're planning for the future. And uh, we had, in, after a few years of negotiation, uh, a treaty, the SKA Observatory Convention, was signed at the ceremony in Rome on the 12th of March 2019, with seven of those now 15 members. And what's very pleasing is that uh, we now have four of the members have ratified. Um, those of you who follow us on, the, on, on social media will see that our Australian colleagues announced their ratification this very morning, uh, which is extremely pleasing. We need uh, five countries, uh, including the three host countries, so that is including the UK, uh, to be able to establish the observatory and our colleagues in the United Kingdom are working to uh, complete the ratification of the convention in due course. So what is our timeline? Well, these are the major milestones. Um, you'll 
uh, undoubtedly be aware that there is a, a huge um, a huge timeline sitting underneath uh, with uh, uh, many milestones, many activities on all fronts. But these are the top level milestones. The treaty has been signed. The major reviews were all completed earlier this year. And we're now working towards the SKA Observatory, the intergovernmental uh, organization existing in the very near future. And then we are uh, assuming that the, the, the future council gives us the go ahead. We will begin construction activity around the middle of next year, aiming for the construction being complete uh, in 2028, probably, um, with the start of full operations following shortly thereafter. So a lot of this, you know, the, the whole the theme of uh, these events is the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and what's, uh, what you see on the screen now, what's very pleasing is that we, we believe we contribute uh, to a significant number uh, of these development goals, uh, which will be described in a little more detail uh, in the next talk by, by William Garnier. Because as well as doing astronomy, it is our intent, uh, and in fact our mandate uh, from our governments uh, that a, a broader impact um, be delivered by the SKA, which benefits society uh, and industry in our partner countries. So, Summary, we are global. Uh, I believe the, the project exemplifies the, the UN's digital agenda, both in its nature uh, and in its location uh, in, across three, three continents. It's, a, it's an international partnership with 15 countries and we work better together. That is very clear after the years of working together. Uh, it's, it's very impressive how, how the countries can get together and produce something that is greater, the, the sum is, is greater than the, the parts. We're contributing towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals while delivering the secrets of the universe. So thank you very much for your attention.